Now, let's take a look at the foods here in the first step. The, the antioxidant-rich foods that really minimize the chances of athletes getting run down and getting sick. We're talking about fresh produce, fruits and vegetables. And typically, the fresher and the more colorful, the better. So our simple coaching cue here would be get some color on your plate. When you see athletes building meals that you might be at, incidental to feeding this hockey team that you're working with, and there's just starch and meat on the plate, and they're completely missing the mark here on some kind of fresh produce, that's something you're really going to have to zero in on, that coaching cue, and creating some value behind why we need to get some color on our plate. You know, this is even something I would even dole out to the parents at this point to have it be engaged in if we're putting on a team meal, to have something from each of these three steps and assign. Uh, one of the parents to dole that out to where when we build meals for teams that they look like we'd put together at a training table with something out of each of these three steps and not to be devoid of fresh produce. If a bottle of ketchup salt's laying out there, then maybe we certainly could have done better, all right? So these are antioxidant-rich foods. They literally have some anti-inflammatory properties to them. It helps us deal with the stresses that athletes are going to endure with all kinds of exposures they get. Metabolic stresses kick up inflammation and free radicals in our bodies when we do a lot of work. Environmental stresses do the same thing in hot or humid weather or extremely cold weather. Emotional stresses that these athletes are enduring with the challenges of family and with their peers um, and with the hormonal changes that are coming at this point in their life are all things that can literally have a biochemical inf impact on their bodies to where the the foods in these first step can, can kind of neutralize some of these challenges that occur, can blunt some of the free radicals with, with the power of antioxidants and keep the inflammatory status of the athlete minimized and in check to where they don't run themselves in the ground and be vulnerable to get sick and get run down every time the weather changes or every time the finals come up or once in a while when they go on the road at this age and travel to compete. So when it's all said and done, people that don't value fresh produce in this first step don't get the antioxidant status right, don't do it consistently, they're going to miss some time. They're going to be the ones that drop out on you uh, when they're under stress, miss those critical practices, those coaching points that you've got to go over all again and it burning valuable time on the ice covering the same ground because half the team was sick. If you can avoid that, that's a big, big deal. Now, something else that can contribute to a real negative biochemical profile with a lot of free radicals getting produced is binge eating, where athletes skip breakfast and lunch, then binge eat so much food at one time during dinner and late night snacks that it kicks up free radical production and can definitely screw up sleep when athletes consume a lot of calories late at night. But I think the biggest negative that we've got going with binge eating is that the athletes will eat anything they can get their hands on. And so fast food will look like pheasant under glass at that point, and we've got a problem. When athletes start to value fast food at that level, uh, consume it with any consistency because it's really devoid of these step one foods. There's just not a lot of good fast food out there where you can really drag the stuff through the garden and get some color on your plate, right? So be very careful. The athletic meal pattern that we're looking for with athletes, eating about every four hours, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a light protein snack before bed. And something else we got to really drive home on fast food is it's not just what they're not giving us with the fresh produce, it's how they prepare the food. They're cooking at too high a temperatures, which forms carcinogens. When they fry foods, it does the same thing, forms some very nasty uh, inflammatory compounds. And yet, athletes continually put this food supply up on a pedestal like it is really valuable. Now, the binge eating patterns that we think are vulnerable are also creating some vulnerability for visceral fat storage, a lot of fat around those organs in the visceral or the abdominal region. Too much fat there literally limits your ability for your lungs to expand. So, you know, it's going to hurt your endurance, but for sure we're talking about much bigger issues, short-term immune health, long-term the genesis of disease. So there's something really bad about that visceral fat accumulation and binge eating, fast food, big part of the problem. We've got to really coach against this. And we've heard from some wonderful sleep education experts as part of this program. But I, I better warn you, if you don't get a good night's sleep, if you eat a bunch of fast food right before bed, and you end up getting six and a half hours or less of sleep, it looks like your blood pressure will start to raise. This is a bad deal. 
people that raise their blood pressure from any fashion, and this happens with any regularity, uh, will definitely have an enlarged heart, and an enlarged heart can lead to some very uh, unhealthy potential consequences when exer athletes exercise at a high intensity, especially in hot, humid weather. So we're very, very concerned about anything that raises blood pressure and anything that compromises sleep and compromises recovery can raise blood pressure. And if your blood pressure is up consistently also, your endurance will be very poor. So athletes, you're going to hear us talk about a lot about blood pressure today. Um, two bad nights of sleep in a row, bad deal. One night a lot of people can accommodate, like the night before a game when they're uptight. But two nights in a row, real bad for performance. That's when you're really going to see these athletes drop off and there's going to be more immune vulnerability for them to get sick. The simple signs that you should coach them up on. If they wake up with a lot of <clears throat> upper respiratory junk, a lot of stuff in their eyes, bad complexion, swollen lymph nodes. These are all early warning signs and symptoms that their lack of sleep and maybe lack of commitment to the foods here, antioxidant-rich foods in this first step are setting the stage for them to go down on us and to miss practice and, and to miss academics as a student athlete. Not a good deal. Um, if this continues, the athletes continue to ignore this and burn it at both ends. Uh, don't be shocked when these, they, their mental health goes in the tank. They can't get along with teammates, can't get along with family and friends, people that really care about them. Um, this, is, this is a real bad deal, but it is a manifestation of unchecked inflammation that can come from lack of sleep and lack of antioxidant intake. And when athletes are injured, there's even a greater vulnerability for them to get depressed and get down. And for whatever it is that's got them down and depressed, it also increases their drive to go eat uh, sugar, starch, and fat. It makes them want to go eat when we're depressed fast food. All right, so it's just our body's own natural protective me mechanism when we're under stress to crave those types of foods. If you're conscious of it, then maybe you'll be a little less vulnerable to it. And the other thing to think about is that if this goes unchecked, uh, you know, the athletes never take any of this to heart. The genesis of degenerative disease is going to occur sooner rather than later in their lives. Now, short term right now, they're totally focused on making the team, where they're at on the bench, but you've got to make it a bigger story and a more valuable story about what's going on with rest and the quality of your fresh produce intake with the genesis of disease, because that's really the most important take-home message, is the vulnerability that comes if we don't take this to heart. So if you take a look at this poster, we have vitamin C sources, we have carotenoid sources. These are both great antioxidant sources that come primarily from fruits and vegetables. But if you take a look at the top left-hand side of that poster, there's a two-for-one list. There is a list of vitamin C and carotenoid-rich foods. They're all in one food together. You hear about it a lot being talked about as superfoods. Well, that's just because they contain, they pack such a powerful punch, having the value of what comes from fruit and vegetable in one food. So, for example, if you take a look at something like cantaloupe, it's got the vitamin C of a melon and the pigment of a carrot in one food. Tomatoes are the same way. Dark greens instead of regular old lettuce. Very powerful. Red peppers got to pack a double punch. And anywhere you see a little star or an asterisk in that list, that's a three-for-one food. That means it's got some vitamin E activity, which is another antioxidant in it to boot, which is fantastic. You know, the, the fruits and vegetables are mostly water-soluble antioxidants. And here's a wonderful fat-soluble antioxidant from our vitamin E sources. And they act in different tissues. So that's why it's good to mix it up. And there is such a thing as healthy fat, and here it is. It's nuts and seeds and olives and avocados. These are the, the naturally vitamin E-rich foods. I would never talk any athlete, even if they were trying to lose a little body fat, out of using nuts and seeds as a healthy snack. In fact, if I was going to send everybody off to school with something, it would be dried nuts, dried fruit and nuts and seeds. And the two that I'd really go after it would be almonds and walnuts. And then the reason we're after the walnuts is because there's a a little bit of omega-3 fatty acids in, in walnuts, like you hear about from salmon. And so we get them from marine sources, whether it's salmon or in a few vegan sources like walnuts and flaxseed. But the bottom line is this is a wonderful antioxidant. And it turns out the more omega-3s we have from food sources in our diet, the more of it will lodge in tissues like our brain. And brain tissue that has more omega-3s in it looks like it might be more resilient to damage from concussions. It won't stop a concussion. If you get a concussion, you're, but it might 
lessen the amount of damage because of the anti-inflammatory properties of this fat-soluble antioxidant in our fat-soluble tissue of our brain. So it's a very interesting time with a very hot topic right now, uh, why we need to diversify our antioxidant sources. If you look right below the vitamin E sources, there's another list called complementary antioxidants. This is what we find in garlic and onions and in the skins of apples and the skins of pears. We find it in herbs. We find it in tea. My goodness, if you can help get athletes to shift off of soft drinks to tea, that is a huge move with regards to their overall quality of their diet and antioxidant intake. Tea is one of our best things we have to combat higher blood pressure, by the way. So that's a good one. Anything that we get around the skins of grapes and the seeds of grapes or any other berries, extraordinarily potent antioxidants in this complementary antioxidant category. And that's why you hear about some value of red wine over white wine. We're certainly not going to be talking about the accolades of drinking wine here at this age group, but it's, it's the reason why you hear more value behind red wine because uh, more of the antioxidant from the skins make it into red wine than white wine based on the way that they process it. I think it's not too early, however, to be aware that a lot of young athletes at this age are experimenting with alcohol. By the time students are seniors in high school, 75% of them have had their first drink and about a third of them binge drink on a regular basis. So let's not be naive. Um, let's be aware that uh, of all the things that you are educated on, on, on deterring recovery that come with alcohol from our alcohol educator in this series, the reality is one more we've got to hammer home here is that blood pressure is also disrupted. So yet again, another problem with blood pressure that can set the stage for an enlarged heart and very poor endurance and maybe something very catastrophic. So all the foods here in this first step, extraordinarily important. Think about it like this. The Grand Canyon didn't get carved after one big flood and an athlete's not gonna die if they miss eating their cantaloupe at one meal. But the reality is uh, if they are, don't value it and they consistently pass on it and compromise their rest and their antioxidant intake, there is going to be a gradual erosive effect to their immune health, and it's going to set the stage for the genesis of disease long term. We really need these athletes to value the foods in the first step like their medicine and to put that kind of value on going after them when they build their meals. That completes the video portion of this segment. Now let's move on.